Hey there, I'm Aurelia, and I've got a story that'll make your head spin. But before I dive in, do me a solid and hit that like button and subscribe. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming. So here I'm knee-deep in dusty old artifacts at the local museum where I work as a historian. It's not glamorous, but man, do I love it. My family's got this crazy rich history, and I guess that's where I get my passion from. Speaking of family, there's my brother Jake. He's got charm oozing out of his ears, but responsibility? Not so much. We're close, but sometimes I wonder if we're even related. Aurelia, you're not going to believe this. Jake bursts into the museum, interrupting my cataloging. I sigh. What now, Jake? Another get-rich-quick scheme? He grins. Nah, even better. I met someone. She's amazing, Leah. You gotta meet her. And that's how Chloe entered our lives. She seemed nice enough, but something about her made me uneasy. Maybe it was the way her eyes lit up when Jake mentioned our family's antiques. Later that week, I'm having coffee with my best friend Olivia. She's tapping away at her laptop, probably chasing another big scoop. So what's the deal with Jake's new girl? Olivia asks, not looking up from her screen. I shrug. I don't know. Something feels off. Olivia finally looks at me. Your spidey senses tingling? Before I can answer, my phone rings. It's my grandmother, Martha. Aurelia, dear. Her warm voice fills the line. Can you stop by later? I want to show you something. At Grandma's house, she leads me to her study. She pulls out an old, ornate box. This locket, she says, opening the box to reveal a stunning golden piece, has been in our family for generations. It's time I passed it on to you. My jaw drops. Grandma, I can't take this. It's too valuable. You're the keeper of our family's history now, Aurelia. I trust you with it. That night, I'm admiring the locket when Jake barges into my room. Whoa, is that the family locket? His eyes widen. That thing's gotta be worth a fortune. It's not about the money, Jake. It's about our heritage. He rolls his eyes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, can I borrow some cash? I want to take Chloe somewhere nice. I hand him a few bills, shaking my head as he dashes off. The next few weeks fly by. I'm busy at work. Jake's always out with Chloe, and the locket sits safely in its new home. A secure safe in my apartment. Or so I thought. One evening I come home to find my apartment door ajar. My heart races as I step inside. Everything looks normal, except... I rush to the safe, my hands shaking as I input the code. It opens and my stomach drops. The locket is gone. My hands were shaking so bad I could barely dial Jake's number. Jake, the locket's gone. Someone broke in. What? I'll be right there. Jake showed up with Chloe in tow. He took charge, calling the cops while I sat there, numb. Officer, someone broke into my sister's place and stole our family heirloom, Jake explained when the police arrived. I frowned. Something about his tone seemed... off. The cop took notes. Any signs of forced entry? The door was ajar when I got home. I said. Jake jumped in. The lock must have been picked. These old buildings, you know? But our building had state-of-the-art security. Jake knew that. Why would he say otherwise? After the cops left, Olivia came over. All right, Nancy Drew, let's do some digging. We spent the next week scouring every pawn shop and jewelry store in town. No luck. This doesn't make sense, Olivia muttered. A piece that valuable would be hard to move without attracting attention. I nodded, a sinking feeling in my gut. Unless it never left the family. Olivia's eyes widened. You don't think... I shook my head. I don't know what to think anymore. That night I couldn't sleep. I found myself in Jake's room looking for... I don't know what. That's when I saw it. A receipt poking out from his jacket pocket. My heart stopped. It was for an engagement ring. An obscenely expensive one. The next morning I confronted Jake. Where'd you get the money for Chloe's ring? His face darkened. You went through my stuff? Answer the question, Jake. I've been saving up, okay? Not that it's any of your business. Saving up? You can barely pay rent. 
And now, right after the locket disappears, you're buying expensive jewelry? Jake's face turned red. Are you accusing me of something? I don't know, Jake. Should I be? Unbelievable, he spat. My own sister doesn't trust me. For your information, I got a bonus at work. But thanks for believing in me. He stormed out, leaving me feeling like the bad guy. The family dinner that weekend was tense, to say the least. I just don't understand how this could happen, Grandma Martha said, her voice quivering. Don't worry, Grandma. The cops will find it. I couldn't take it anymore. Will they, Jake, or should we be looking closer to home? The table went silent. What are you implying, Aurelia? Mom asked, her voice sharp. Nothing, I muttered. Forget it. Jake stood up. No, let's hear it. You obviously have something to say. Fine. I think it's awfully convenient that right after the locket disappears, you're suddenly flush with cash. Jake's face went white. How dare you? I would never. Then explain the ring, Jake. Explain how you afforded it. Chloe, who'd been oddly quiet, suddenly spoke up. What ring? Oops, Jake fumbled. I, I was going to surprise you. Chloe's eyes lit up. Oh, Jake. As she threw her arms around him, something caught my eye. On her finger was a ring I hadn't noticed before. And in the center, my blood ran cold. The stone. It looked exactly like the one from our family locket. I locked eyes with Jake over Chloe's shoulder. His expression said it all. He knew I knew, and this was far from over. Olivia, I need your help, I said, pacing my living room. Something's not adding up with Jake and Chloe. Olivia cracked her knuckles. Time to put these journalistic skills to work. What do we know about Chloe? Not much, as it turned out. But Olivia's digging revealed a pattern. Chloe had a history of dating wealthy guys, and wherever she went, valuable items tended to disappear. Aurelia, look at this. Olivia called me over to her laptop. Jake's LinkedIn? Total fiction. He was fired months ago. My stomach dropped. Then where's he getting money for that ring? More digging revealed mountains of debt. Credit cards, loans, you name it. He's drowning, I whispered. But why didn't he come to us for help? Olivia's phone pinged. My contact at the jewelry store came through. Aurelia, they have the locket, or what's left of it. We raced to the store. The owner, a sleek man named Mr. Patel, greeted us. Ah, yes, the locket. Unique piece. A young man brought it in, said it was a family heirloom he inherited. My heart sank. What did you do with it? Mr. Patel looked uncomfortable. We reused the gemstone in a ring and the gold necklace without the stone. Chloe's ring. It all made sense now. As we left, Olivia grabbed my arm. Aurelia, look. Across the street, Jake and Chloe were exiting a wedding planning boutique. They're rushing the wedding, I realized. But why? Back at my place, we pieced it together. Jake, desperate and in debt, had stolen and sold the locket. Chloe, seeing an opportunity, was pushing for a quick wedding. But there's more, Olivia said, pulling up an email she'd intercepted. Look at this message from Chloe to a friend. She's planning to leave Jake after the wedding, once she has access to your family's assets. I felt sick. We have to stop this. Just then, my phone rang. It was Grandma Martha. Aurelia, dear, Jake just announced his engagement. We're having a family dinner to celebrate. You'll be there, won't you? An idea formed. Wouldn't miss it, Grandma. Oh, and could you invite Richard, the family lawyer? I have some questions about... Inheritance. After I hung up, I turned to Olivia. We're going to expose them at the dinner. Olivia grinned. What's the plan? We spent the next few hours plotting. We'd need evidence, witnesses, and perfect timing. Richard will be key, I said. If we can get him to bring the right documents. As we finalized our plan, a wave of sadness hit me. This would destroy Jake, but he'd made his choice. You okay? Olivia asked softly. I nodded, stealing myself. Let's do this. The next evening, I arrived at Grandma's house, heart pounding. Jake and Chloe were already there, all smiles and fake cheer. Aurelia, Jake called out. Come congratulate us. I plastered on a smile, knowing that in a few hours, 
their world would come crashing down. Let the game begin. The big day arrived and I felt like I was going to be sick. The church was decked out, guests were filing in, and there was Jake, looking nervous but happy. If only he knew. Olivia gave me a thumbs up from her position near the back. Everything was set. The music started and Chloe began her walk down the aisle. I had to admit, she looked stunning. Too bad it was all a lie. Just as the priest asked if anyone had any objections, Grandma Martha stood up, right on cue. I object, she said, her voice strong. This marriage is based on lies and theft. The crowd gasped. Jake's face went white. Grandma, what are you talking about? He stammered. Martha held up a familiar golden chain. This locket, the one you said was stolen, Jake. I found it in your room. Chloe's eyes darted around looking for an escape. Jake, what's going on? I stepped forward. I'll tell you what's going on. Jake stole our family heirloom and sold it to buy your ring. And you, Chloe, you're planning to leave him after you get your hands on our family's assets. Jake was shaking his head, desperately trying to deny everything. Chloe's sweet facade crumbled. You idiot! She screamed at Jake. You said your family was loaded. Where are all the valuables you promised me? Olivia stepped up, laptop in hand. Right here, folks. Emails, bank statements, everything. Jake's been lying about his job, he's drowning in debt, and Chloe here has a history of scamming wealthy men. As the evidence was presented, Jake crumpled to the floor. Chloe, realizing the game was up, made a break for it. But Olivia was quicker, tackling her at the door. Not so fast, princess, Olivia grunted, holding her down. The next few hours were a blur of tears, police statements, and family drama. By the end of it, Jake was in custody, Chloe was being investigated for her past scams, and I felt... empty. Six months later, things looked different. The locket was back where it belonged, restored to its former glory. Jake was facing the music. No jail time, but he was cut off from the family and struggling to find work with his reputation in tatters. Last I heard, Chloe was facing charges for her previous scams. Karma's a real piece of work, huh? As for me, I threw myself into my work at the museum. All that detective work paid off. I got promoted to head of the historical preservation department. Olivia's expose on the whole fiasco launched her career into the stratosphere. She was now chasing down corruption stories all over the country. Grandma Martha? She turned the whole experience into a mission. She started giving talks about protecting family heirlooms and spotting scammers. Who knew Grandma had a second career as a public speaker? One Sunday, we all gathered at Grandma's place, minus Jake, of course. As we sat around the dinner table, the locket gleaming on Grandma's neck, I realized something. You know, I said, raising my glass, in a weird way, this whole mess brought us closer, made us appreciate our history more. Family is the real treasure, Aurelia, and that's something no one can steal. As we clinked glasses, I felt a sense of peace. We'd been through hell, but we'd come out stronger. And that locket? It had a whole new chapter in its story now. And that's the end of Aurelia's wild ride. Now here's a question that'll really make you think. If you discovered a sibling had stolen and sold a priceless family heirloom, would you expose them to the entire family? Or try to handle it privately? It's a tough call, right? Family loyalty versus justice. Where do you draw the line between protecting your family's reputation and holding someone accountable for their actions? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm really curious to see where you all stand on this. If you enjoyed this tale of family drama and sweet revenge, hit that like button and subscribe for more stories that'll have you questioning your own moral compass. Trust me, we've got plenty more where this came from.